Welcome into the LC Transfer Room. My name is Jack. Today's video is an interview between Chris Stonage and Ty Bracey, an Aston Villa fan who gives his insight after the appointment of Liverpool legend Steven Gerrard as the head coach of Aston Villa. Make sure to stick around to get the insights of Ty. Thanks for coming out of the channel to him. Let's jump into the video today. Hello and welcome back to the LFC Transfer and YouTube channel and Twitter. And I am joined by Ty Bracey, an Aston Villa fan who is, well, I'm, I would say in a good mood uh, today. Uh, how are you, Ty? Are you good, mate? Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm wicked. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for asking and uh, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, things are really good. Feeling very optimistic today. I'm quite a positive person uh, generally anyway, but, uh, you know, it's been a bit been a bit of a roller coaster the last week or so, you know, with... Uh, well, I say I say week. We've had a, a poor run of form, and it's been it's been a bit rough to be to be a Villa fan. Um, and then obviously we've we 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 went through everything with Dean Smith. You know, we went through the the highs, and uh, you know, getting promotion, staying up on the last day of the season, having a good season last year. You know, COVID. It's it's been one of those things where it was uh it was hard to let go, but you know, end of an era, and it's time to move on. Yeah, definitely. And if you have been li have been living under a rock, uh, Steven Gerrard has been appointed uh, Aston Villa manager. And that's why, you know, we're all buzzing here at the LFC Transfer Room to see how uh, Aston Villa get on and they'll definitely become everyone of our second teams. Uh, first of all, mate, though, uh, do you think that Dean Smith, should, looking back, should have been sacked? Um, and what were your thoughts coming into the season? Obviously losing Jack Grealish, uh, but did add into the squad quite well, I would say. Yeah, I mean, losing Jack was never going to be never going to be an an easy thing, you know. With in terms of replacement, it was it was always going to be tough. And then we haven't really had um, we haven't really had a fully fit squad for a while either, which has been quite tough. You know, we've we've had a lot of injuries, we've had a lot of setbacks. So um, a bit premature, maybe. But the the owners are just showing their intent and showing their ambition that you know they won't stand for poor results. You know, so. Income Steven Gerrard. So one of those things, unfortunately, where um, I understand both points of views. I understand people who are saying he should have been given more time due to the circumstances, but I also understand the people who are like, we need results now. So, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm easy with, uh, with the outcome, to be fair, Chris. Yeah, I mean, and Steven Gerrard comes in. He's won one Scottish Premiership title with Rangers, albeit it was un invincible. Uh, do you think it's a, a step up uh, for Aston Villa? And do you think it's the right step for Steven Gerrard? I think he always wanted to, you know, his his lifelong goal is, you know, after retiring from professional football was always going to be to manage Liverpool, wasn't it? And he, he probably will end up doing that one day, but I don't, I think it's a bit of a disrespect on Villa to think that Villa are the stepping stone for him to get there. But if he is going to be the replacement for Klopp in years to come, then that's something where he has to prove himself at that level. You know, Scottish Premier League, isn't anywhere near the standard of the Premier League. You know, no offence. You know, Celtic are a huge club and so are Rangers. They're both very big clubs and, you know, they're, they're worlds apart from the rest of the teams in their league. So, he definitely needed to prove himself in the Premier League. Um, I think it's going to be a huge task for him and it's going, to be, it's going to be huge for us. And I don't think he's anywhere near his peak in terms of, you know, he, his knowledge and his tactics. And, you know, he, he's probably not always going to get it right, but... We have to be patient and understand that it's a new appointment. It's it's his time to shine in the Premier League and we'll, we'll back him all the way. Yeah, I mean, you, you've obviously got a good community of, of Aston Villa fans following you. What's the general vibe around, around the club? Is it a positive feeling? I feel like it's been very similar to mine, really, where people are a bit, ugh, at first when they seen that he was favourite to take over. And then I feel like the more that people have thought about the idea and seen that it's looking more like that it's happening, People are warming to the idea more, which is, which is great. And, you know, I was a bit optimistic at first and then I kind of had my doubts. And now I'm just in a really good mood about it. You know, we've got one of the Premier League's greatest players of all time. And that that's huge for us, uh, that alone. But he, he has to show that he's capable of doing that as a manager as well. And from what I'm hearing, the owners of... I've openly said to him that he's uh, he's going to have a budget in January to do if he wants to do some business. I'm not going to lie. We, we, we've done a lot of work up top, but I, I definitely think we need some 
we need something in the middle of the field at Villa, most definitely. Um, it was something that we had spoke about, you know, during the transfer window that we need someone in the middle and nobody came in. Um, but I think it's an area that we definitely need to definitely need to boost up on. So I, I'm I'm interested to see what he's going to do with the, with the money. And, you know, I, I think Villa as a whole like to recruit good English talent with, you know, a big, a, I think, with Steven Gerrard is not going to be a better manager with pulling power. You know, we've got the likes of Carney Chuck Wemaker, who's one of the biggest prospects in the Premier League of his age. Um, and I think he will strive under Steven Gerrard and he can learn so much. I think there's so many of them who are going to have so much to learn because he's done it at the highest level. Granted, he hasn't won the league, but he's done everything. You know, he's he's experienced probably everything that you could experience as, as a player, uh, the highs and the lows. Um, so I'm excited that he'll bring that level of experience to the players to empathise in their situations, you know, good or bad, you know, and I, I really do think he's the type of character who will bring uh, the best out of the team, 100%. Yeah. Um, I mean, you mentioned, you know, it, it would be an insult. I do agree with you that, that Aston Villa's, you know, a stepping stone because it's definitely not. It's one of the most historic clubs um, in England. But do you think that maybe the wider media will naturally look at it as that? Yeah, yeah, 100%. And, and I'm OK with that. You know, people, people don't often realise how short-lived managers, uh, how long a manager spends at a club. You know, in modern football, you know, the, the the stories of Sir Alex Ferguson and, you know, Manchester United being the DNA of that club from head to toe in Sir Alex is, it's unheard of in, in modern football, you know, in football today. And managers just don't tend to stick at clubs, you know, longer than, you know, three or four years and anything over that, you know, is, is, is a huge success in my opinion. So, um I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. You know, it's a shame that it's an international break, but it gives him some, uh, some time to find his feet around Villa Park, around Bollymore Heath, which is our training ground. And I'm just really excited for... And I think the players will be really excited as well, you know, because there's just so much to look forward to and things couldn't really get any worse than losing five on the bounce. So anything better than that is you know is a win really and you know we've got Brighton in our next fixture and that's no that's no easy game Brighton have you know granted had a uh, few poor games recently but you know they're not doing too bad in the league so far and they're, they're no pushover so I'm excited I, I feel like Villa had lost their identity on the pitch in a way um, and we're doing a lot of hoof ball and there doesn't really seem to be any plan of what to do you know we've got Two of the best goal scorers in the league in Danny Ings and Ollie Watkins. You know, Ollie Watkins, I think, is going to have a huge future ahead of him. And Danny Ings is a proven Premier League goal scorer. He's a, he's a, he's a natural goal scorer. So I'm excited to see what he can do with those two guys. And obviously, we've got Leon Bailey, Buendia as well. We've got some real talent in the team. So to lose, lose five on the bounce and just look, you know, rubbish. Um, I'm really excited to see what he can get out of those type of players. I really am. Yeah. And I mean... They've given him a three and a half year contract now. Jurgen Klopp, I'm going to shape this to a, to a Liverpool angle. Jurgen Klopp's deal runs out in two and a half years. The rumours were coming out this morning that it was two and a half year contract, um, yeah. but it is it is a three and a half year contract. Now, do you think at the end of that time, what do you think uh, Stephen Gerrard could achieve at Aston Villa? What would you expect him to achieve at Aston Villa in his th original three and a half years, and then maybe even more? I mean. I'll answer that question with what I know about the owner's plans are the uh, Wes, Eden, Wes Eden, sorry, I don't know if you're aware of Wes Eden's, you know, but Wes Eden's owns a huge team uh, of in basketball in in the States and he owns the books and I think they've, they've just won the title there and he has experience, not necessarily in football, but he has experience in managing, you know, a sports team and, you know, that's no easy task. So to have two, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, it's most definitely not easy for him. So he knows what it's like to win and he's taken over a team that weren't winning and wants to restore them to winning ways. And he's instilling that into Villa Park that that is his intention as well. And he wants to take us to the top. And I don't think the owners will take anything less than European football in those three years. You know, it's not going to be something, I don't think it's going to happen this season. If it does, then that's, you know, crazy. But 
I think over the next couple of years, that's going to be the push. You know, we're going to push for it this year. But if it doesn't happen this year due to how we've started, fair enough. But most definitely for next year with the team we've got and who uh, Gerard's going to bring in, it's going to be something that's it's not going to be acceptable to at least push for it. And do you think that may stand him in good stead in the future, maybe, to take over Jurgen Klopp? Do you personally think that he's the right man to do so? And, you know, as a, from an outside perspective, um, without the Liverpool blinkers on? I mean, I understand that this is a Liverpool podcast, so I, I'm ha- I'm OK to, to, to talk <laughs> about that. But if someone asked me that on one of my Villa podcasts, I'd say, no, I, I don't want to talk about that. But I will, because I, I don't particularly mind Liverpool. Um, as a club, I like Liverpool. I think it's just going to be the fairy tale that all Liverpool fans want. You know, they'll probably want him to win the treble, you know, with Liverpool. But somewhere along the line, I wouldn't say necessarily that Villa are the stepping stone. Could he go from Villa to then Liverpool? Who knows? We, we, we just don't know. But regardless of that if he does well at villa and ends up moving on to liverpool i'm absolutely fine with that because if that's in his destiny if that's what's meant to be that is what's meant to be if you know i'm i'm not looking at it as he's come because that's a stepping stone to liverpool i'm looking at it as he wants to prove himself at the highest level in the best league in the world and i don't think he's probably thinking about the next 3 years he's probably taking each day as it comes and all he's focused on right now is what he can do to get villa where they should be because, you know, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that Villa are a big club, big club with a lot of history. But in recent history, there hasn't been a lot going on. You know, we've had a roller coaster the last six years. You know, it's been mentally exhausting being a Villa fan the last six years. Um, to take over someone like Klopp is, for anybody, Steven Gerrard, it could be anyone. It could be the best managers in the world, you know. It's never going to be an easy challenge, you know, that, that club. Is head to toe Jurgen Klopp, you know, like I said about Man United, it's it's head to toe him, and you guys are absolutely smashing it this year. And I, and I openly said I didn't think Liverpool were going to finish top four this year, you know, because Man U had bought Ronaldo in, Man City and Man City, Chelsea had spent a lot of money. I really did not think that you guys were going to hit the ground running and be pushing for the title. And, you know, it just shows in football, it doesn't matter what you think, something's always going to happen that you don't expect. And that's the beauty of the game, isn't it? So, down the line, I think there will be a liverpool Steven Gerrard chapter, whether it's after these three and a half years, I don't know. But I like that now there's, you know, I've had a, a lot of Liverpool fans in my mentions and, you know, there's been a lot of Rangers fans getting wound up and, through what we went through in the summer with Grealish, I completely understand. Don't get me wrong, I'll jump on the bandwagon and have a laugh because I got absolutely destroyed by Man City fans through the entire summer and I just had to take it on the chin. So I know exactly what they're going through. They had someone who they loved, they adored, you know, and a Premier League club comes knocking and straight away, you know, it's within three days of the rumours starting, he's at Villa, you know, so... I think there will be a Steven Gerrard Liverpool story at some point. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Well, so much appreciated, Ty, for, for coming on at such short notice. Where can we all find your stuff uh, over on social media? Uh, just at Ty Bracey, the name on the screen here, uh, just without the space, with an at the start on Twitter. Brilliant. And uh, there's loads of uh, great spaces that Ty does. So uh, make sure to go check them out. Um, make sure to subscribe to The Transfer Room. Follow us on Twitter, uh, on Spotify, on TikTok, on all the good stuff. And we will see you in the next video.